very light here and I'm just like in a bright zone. Hello. Good morning. Hey Ella, hey Clem. Um, yeah, sorry I'm a couple of minutes, well a minute or so late, it's 11 o'clock and we have posture clinic with Oki and we're just going to add her on now. How is everyone? Happy Thursday. Lauren. Hello. 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 <laughs> How are you? I am good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Sorry I'm a little bit late. I didn't really, the time ran away. What can we me. say? What can we say? Well, I just realised I was on the wrong Instagram account. I nearly joined somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm really, really good. Um, shall we, I'll just do a little introduction and then we'll do a quick, just make sure we can both see our mats. Oh, yeah. um, so many people are so excited for this. Um, so yeah, guys, this is Oki and she is the founder of Hamilton Physiotherapy. And she's also a great friend of mine. And I was working out, have we known each other for like 18 years? Oh my God. That's I know, this, we're kind of uh, showing our, our age, but we met at uni. We'll have to have an extra special celebration when we hit 20. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, you came on maybe three weeks ago and you just blew everyone away yes. with your posture clinic class and mm -hmm. you are backed by popular demand. And we're so happy to have you. So I'm excited. very happy to be back. I'm excited. I'm pumped. Although Good. Just, okay, so Dar, let's just have a quick... Uh, and also, guys, um, you need... If you've got a towel or a pillow, a little pillow, is that... What, apart from that, a mat and a little, a little pillow for your beautiful heads. It's perfect. just so that your posture is perfect whilst you're inside lying. But I mean, it's, love that. It's okay. Posture. For those of us that don't have one of those pillows, just a towel. Or I'm actually going to use my seat cover. Uh, yeah, pull your mat jack back just a, just a tiny bit more, tiny bit more. Perfect. And yeah, so guys, we're gonna do the class and then Oki, are we gonna do a Q&A afterwards? Yes, yeah, we've got a few questions uh, which we can go through. Um, but today we're gonna to basically be working on uh, some lower limb and a little bit of core stuff. So it's kind of, it's a lower limb rehab session, um, a little bit to do with running, but can be used for anything with knee pain or even back pain would be great as well, just to get you nice and strong. Um, so, should we get started? Yeah, babes, I'm down with it, I'm ready. Hey, Okay, you can't see my head. Here we are. This happened last time. One sec. Oh, I'm really not even that tall, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, very. Maybe you should start, take a step forward. Now it's check. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Back. One step back. There you go. We can see perfectly. Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to start like we always do in standing. We're just going to take a moment just to get our posture nicely aligned. So you're going to have your feet rooted down to the floor. Thinking about being nice and active through the soles of the feet, so just lifting up through the arches, softening the knees, and then you're going to pop your hands on your hip bones and then to squeeze the glutes and do some pelvic tilts. So as you roll forward, you breathe in, and then as you squeeze the glutes and roll back, you breathe out. And this is just firing up the core muscles. And you think about opening up through the shoulders and growing up through the crown of the head. Okay, so you're breathing in, and then you're breathing out. So always thinking about growing nice and long through the spine. And we're just warming up the pelvic floor, the transverse abdominis, the glutes, and a bit of the lower spine. Good, and then you're gonna stop in neutral, which is just tucking the pelvis under a little bit, the nice flat pelvis. And we're gonna start by going up onto tiptoes. So um, with lower limb rehab, You've got to think about the whole part of the chain. So it's not just the glutes and the knees that we want to keep strong, but it's the ankles and the feet as well. So what you want as you're going up onto tiptoes, keeping those ankles nice and aligned, which is actually easier said than done sometimes. Harder yeah. said than done. Yeah. And so if you've got weak ankles when you're running, you're going to be propelling yourself on your hips, or you're going to be working really hard through the plantar fascia, and you can end up with things like plantar fasciitis. So not just strong glutes and knees and hips, it's also feet as well. Good, we're gonna add the arms in, okay? So you're gonna come all the way up onto tiptoes, lift the arms up, nice stretch through the shoulders, all the way up, back and round. Good, breathing in, and then out. Good. And obviously this is working balance all the way through the body. 
So it's a really gentle core warm up. Up and back down. Good, breathing in. Last one and back down. And then we're just gonna try a single leg heel raise on uh, each side, just to see how strong you are. So you can go up and down. So I'm actually not very good, I'm gonna cheat. Up Ooh. and down. So keep what are you doing with your hands? Are you putting one up in the air? I'm basically holding onto the ceiling. <laughs> Cheater! Oh, oh wow. I didn't say I'm cheating, but I'm just showing the perfect posture. So you want to go up and down. So try to keep the line, the heels and the pelvis, and it just shows the strength of the car. So if you're running and you're jumping from one foot to the other, you need to have that strength to be able to push you up and down. Ooh, so it might be oh, yeah. So it's just a just a good test to see where you're at. So then swapping to the other side, five again. Two so much harder than what you think. It's ridiculous. I was literally Is there a technique? Like, would so you, you say do it slowly or? I would say slowly focus on something on the floor, engage with the tummy, think about the balloon coming from the crown head. And if you need the wall to practice and build up that strength and keep the alignment, use it. So you want so if you're to really struggling, you can take a wall or something. Oh, yeah, so start with a little bit of support and then build it up. And be oh, beautiful at that. Yeah, so I mean, this is the thing, when you start to break down movements, you know, you really start to see like where yeah. your weaknesses are and you think, you know, I'm really strong in my core and my quads and my glutes, but actually if you can't do a single leg heel raise, then that's going to hinder your running technique. So, okay, we're, gonna, we're keeping on with the single leg stuff, so. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to stand on your left leg, just lift the other leg up, check that your hips are nice and level and your shoulders are nice and level and you're growing up through the crown of the head. So you're going to bring your arms out in front of you at shoulder height. And we're going to do the bow and arrow. So you're going to bring your right hand back to your ear and then forwards again. So what we're doing is warming up the shoulders a little bit. But you're also keeping nice and strong. So your pelvis, your core's working as you keep that balance and the nice posture. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into um, the chest opening. So opening up, looking behind you. Turning the chest so that you're looking towards the right, getting that rotation through the thorax, and then coming back to the midline. So what this is doing is getting a bit of movement through the upper back, but we're also working a lot through the core. So the hips want to stay facing forward. So if you imagine you've got headlights on your hip bones, yeah. press the right hip forwards as you reach the right hand behind you, and then you get a little bit of core work, but you also get the obliques and the thoracic movement, which is really important for running. That feels good. Yeah. Good. And then relax the foot down for a little breather. So when, when you're running, you need a lot of upper body movement as well. So again, if you're stiff in your thorax, that's going to impact your running style. Okay, so staying on and standing on the left leg, we're going to go into the warrior pose. So you're going to start with your knee up high, arms outstretched. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to reach forward, taking the leg out behind you, trying to get your pelvis level and parallel to the floor and then coming all the way back up again. So this is a really nice dynamic ha hamstring exercise. It could be a warm up or, or it's quite a good strong strengthening exercise. Ideally you want your body to be parallel with the floor yeah. when you are at the final part of the position. So as you come back down, so if you were to look through my body now here, my head, my pelvis is nice and level here arms outstretched and it's also getting all the muscles down the back of the body working okay all the way up and back down okay so these are like your dynamic stretches but also strengthening workouts love, love it. on this position i'm only doing a few reps of each because obviously we're going to go through the q a yeah so we're going to go into that warrior pose position pelvis squares the floor and then you're going to open the hip up so squeezing the glutes to lift and then rotate back down again. So this is Ooh. glutes to really do some work. So if you need your foot on the floor, you can. But ideally, you want to open up. And so this is this what's this? Is this challenging and like working your glutes and the standing leg? Yeah, exactly. So this is basically as your pelvis opens up and then closes down, you're having to stabilize with that uh, glute muscle. The piriformis is opening, closing. Sorry, shortening to get the pelvis to open and then stretching and elongating. So it's an eccentric contraction. There's a really strong, Woo! feel that? Oh, do I? 
Thank you. you know where I feel it? I feel it as well in my ankles because my ankles are so unstable. Yeah. So your calf muscles are going to be working over time to keep that ankle nice and stable and to, to balance. And you'll, you might feel that your foot's kind of rocking a lot. Okay, the last one on this side, and then we'll swap legs. Okay, so I want you to think about a running position. So you're going to have standing on your left leg, the right arm forwards and the left arm back and the right legs behind you, bending that left leg, and then we're gonna come up, and then back down. So we're doing like a mini squat, but in a running position. So if I turn sideways, yeah. you see my knees behind the toes, yeah. coming up, and then back down. So it's like a single leg squat, it's basically doing a running style. It's a functional exercise, really working those glutes on the left side, and you can focus on getting that rotation through the upper body as well. Last two. Oh, it's killer. Oh, yeah. And um, one. Good. Um, I just love slowing everything down and focusing on the muscles. Exactly. So running, good. So take the leg back, bend that knee, keep the knee behind the toes. Lovely. Good. Yeah, and you can touch the foot behind you if you need that stability as well. Or otherwise you would keep it floating. Or, the, or you keep it up off the floor. And you're basically just really slowing down that running movement. But it's a really good, so your pelvis is having to stay nice and strong and still. And then coming up, knee up high, good, yeah. And then back down, exactly. Good. Woo! How's that leg feeling? <laughs> feels, feels fiery. Feels really fire, I love it. Good, okay, so we're gonna go on to the other side. So now we're standing on the right leg. Get your balance, get the hips level, the shoulders open. So standing on the right leg now. So now we're swapping legs, yeah. Okay. Arms out in front of you at shoulder height again. And then you can again, you can bring the left hand back to your ear and then in front again. So just warming up through the shoulders. And Ooh, this feels good. Yeah, they're really nice kind of shoulder and chest openers. Keeping that left hip forwards. Two yeah. more. What I realized from your last posture clinic is that I'm tight in my upper, upper thoracic yeah. spine. But it makes such a difference. You know, it's, it's, if, if you're tight somewhere, the rest of the body's gonna have to work much harder. Yeah. By opening out now, so looking behind you, woo, keep pressing that left hip forwards and then back. Open and then back. So we're giving that rotation, really having to stabilize through that right leg. Good, last one. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. <laughs> and then relax back down, have good those feet and calves a little bit. Walk them out a little bit before we go into the warrior pose. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're getting to warrior pose. So up with the left knee, arms out nice and stretched. And then we're going to reach forwards, getting that body nice and parallel to the floor, softening the knee that you're standing on, closing down the left hip towards the floor. So you're really getting those glutes to do some work. Good, all the way back up into standing. Slow everything down as well. So you're really focusing on your posture. Ooh, that's the dog outside. Um, <laughs> good, all the way up. We'll do one more. Have a look. Good, lovely. And then reaching forwards, get that body nice and parallel. Lovely. Arms forward. So as you reach the arms out, good. Yeah, that's where you get that nice bit of lengthening through the body. Oh, I feel so wobbly today. I've just had a week off because I've been away and I'm all over the place. <laughs> yeah, but Oki, guys, she climbed a mountain. You I did to... climb a mountain. <laughs> no, honestly, you're incredible. And I'm still alive, yes. You're still alive. Okay, good. So let's do the um, hip opening and closing. So get hands on your hip bones so you can feel what they're doing. Get the parallels, uh, the hip bones level to the floor. Opening up and then closing down. Feel that glute burn as you open. Ooh. And close. Just do five of those. This is like a clam on steroids. Yeah, exactly. It's a really good one. So, you know, ah! so if you get things like piriformis, if you, you can do just like an eccentric version of them, so you can just do the drop down where you drop the hip down towards the floor. So that's yeah. shifting the muscle as you come up. And as you come down here and drop the hip down, that's lengthening your piriformis, and it's a really nice strength, a lengthening, strengthening. That is killer. That is killer. 
<laughs> my calves are feeling as well. Okay, we're going to do something a bit easier now. So let's go into, we're going to go into a lunge position. So have your right hip forwards. So we're just going to do a couple of hip openers now, because that's Love a hip opener. And when you're going to work on your glutes, you want to open up the hips so that they're in the best possible position to work. So nice wide stride, but your feet hips width apart. And we're just going to go into a long lunge and then come back out. So keeping the front knee behind the toes, so you're protecting the knee. You get a bit of a calf stretch and you should get a bit of a left hip flexor stretch as you yeah. can. So your left leg, you're, you're maintaining it straight. Yes, yeah, so you're keeping it straight at this point and you really, if you think about pressing that left hip forward, that's how you get deep into that hip flexor. Oh yeah. And again, keeping the upper body upright. So you don't want to kind of like arch back, so that's more lumbar spine. So it's just really focusing on that hip. Good, and then we're gonna go into a lunge. So dropping the back knee down to the floor and press up through the heel of the front foot. So you're bending the knee and that's what's going down. You're not coming forwards and backwards. People often get lunges wrong and they do, yes. they do a lot of this. They really do. So if you want to think about going directly down. Do you, do you think, Oki, you know more than me, I, I say there's like even distribution between both legs. Is that correct? So you want, yeah, you want nice hips width apart, so you're balanced. But yeah. then as you're coming up, you want to be pressing up through the heel of the front foot. And yeah. that's how you get the bum muscle on the right, the front leg, to do the hard work. Cool. We'll do two more. And up. So and this is lots of core as well. Yeah. Having to stabilise. Okay, come all the way down to the floor. Bring your hands next to your front foot. And we're going to do a little starter stretch with the hamstrings. So in this position, you're just going to press from the back leg, coming up as if you're about to start a 100 meter race. Oh yeah. And then back down. So up and down. So really nice dynamic hamstring stretch of the front leg. So Love that. These are good before a workout. So you do your dynamic stretching at the beginning of workouts. Yeah. And your static stretching at the end. Mm -hmm. Good. Three, two, and one. Lovely. And then use your tummy just to roll up into standing. And then face the front, we're going to do some sumo squats. So feet are nice and wide. And you're going to take the knees out over the third toe. So you're going outwards and just dropping straight down. And then coming back up. This is really nice for those inner thighs. Yes. Squeezing the glutes and the inner thighs to come back up again, dropping all the way down. Check those knees aren't locking in. So we're protecting yeah. the knees all the time. Squeeze to come back up. We'll do five. This feels good. Yeah. Four. I always think I'm a bit tight here. Yeah. Three. And again, if you're going to go into do loads of squats, getting all these hip openers done beforehand are really important so that your body's in the best position to then activate the right muscles. Good, we're gonna stay down, we're gonna pulse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, shoulders open. Oh man. And ahead, lovely, lift up. And then we're gonna come down and lift a, turn, a heel, so up and the other side. So we'll do 10. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. In the club, this is us. <laughs> yeah, opening the shoulders, right through the crown of the head, Three, two, one, then we'll do five of both. One, two, three, four, five. Good, drop the elbows onto the knees and press the knees out a little bit. Stretch those inner thighs and then keep the elbows on your knees as you straighten your legs and get a nice dynamic hamstring stretch again and then back down into your inner thigh stretch. Oh yes. You do a little roll and a rock. And then up again. Keep the knees slightly soft as you straighten the legs. Nice stretch. Last one. Hands to the floor, if you can get there. And just walk your hands forward so you get again that upper back stretch. And again, in this position with your knees slightly soft, you can open one hand up to the ceiling so you get that thoracic stretch. Mm -hmm. Get a bit more of a hamstring stretch on the right with the left hand up and then the other way around. So a bit of that inner thigh again. Good. 
Draw the tummy back towards the spine. Stacking all the way back up again. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. And now we do Whoa. the other side. Oh man, there's another side? <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. This is the worst thing about doing like an exercise that does one side and then the other, is it? <laughs> You're always like, oh God, the other side. Ah. Okay, so left foot forwards now. Again, wide stance so that you can go into your dynamic stretch without the knee coming in front of the toe. Mm -hmm. We're just going to press down and up. So think about rotating that right hip forward to get that hip flexor stretch. You might need to play around a bit with your movement to see how you can really isolate it to the front of the hip flexor. Press down. Good. Three, two, and one, good, and then into your lunge, so dropping down and press back up. I, don't think, oh, I would say most of my weight is probably more front foot. Okay, yeah. But but you're going straight down rather Yeah, than, and you want both knees bent. Yeah, bend that knee, good, press up through the heel of the front foot. So as you press up, you could probably even step your feet a tight, well, actually no, it's a nice position, yeah, there. So if you drop straight down, good, and then heel to come up. Can you feel that activating that left, the yes. right foot as you come up? Okay. Good. Good. Two more. Keeping nice and square. So hips and shoulders facing forwards. Good. Drop the knee down to the floor. Bring the hands next to the feet. And then we're going to go into the starter position. So coming up and back down. That feels nice. It's such a good stretch. Yes, yeah, lovely. Three. Two and one, lovely. Bring both of your feet together. Walk out in your downward dog again for the calves and the hamstrings. And then you're going to bring both of your knees down to the floor, untuck the toes, grab your towel or head cushion. Okay. <clears throat> and we will come into side lying to do some breathing. Just get my makeshift head cushion up here. Can you see Which is my, my trusty IKEA seat cover. There we go. <laughs> Love it. There's a lovely little head cushion. Yeah, you can see. Might actually swap that. Have your left hip up, Matt. Left hip out. Sorry, your right, your right hip and then we'll be the same. So if you have your right hip up. Right hip, let me look at you. So that, is that your right this hip? This is your my left, left but if you have your right. Okay. Roger that, sister. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way, this is the problem with doing things on Zoom and stuff like that. You have to do everything backwards and inside out. I know, I know. I'm just going to move this down a bit so people can see a little bit more for me. Can you see me okay? I can see you. You look yeah. sensational. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's pop this. Sorry. The beauty of social media. Yeah. And Instagram. Right, I'm on my left hip, babes. So you, yeah, you want your, you want your, you want your right hip up. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, fine. We're actually going the other way, but it doesn't matter. Should we, do you want to swap round? <laughs> oh, I'll swap, sorry, yes. That's, sorry. Now you're lying on your left hip. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so, side lying, okay, that's enough rest for everyone. So what you want is your hip cushion between your head and your arm, and your arm directly over your head. You want your shoulders and your hips stacked on top of each other. And what you want to do is think about having that neutral spine again. So what we're gonna do is press the top hip down towards your feet, which is gonna lift your waist up off the floor, okay? And this is your start position. Every time you do anything in side line, this is the position you should be in, so that you should feel your tummy muscles working straight away. Do you feel that? Yeah, I do. So it's a, just a tiny little thing, but even just sitting here like this, you're working. Yeah. So you're going to have, um, it doesn't matter so much exactly where your positions are for your legs so much. So just a little bend through the hips and the knees. And we're going to do a variation of the clam where you tap the knee in front of one knee. And then we're going to do a little semicircle with the other knee tapping behind. So knee comes in front, loop up and tap the toe behind. So what we're aiming to do is keep the waist up off the floor and keep the trunk and the shoulders nice and still and relaxed. And we're doing a tap in front. 
I'm just watching you. Okay, that. Tap the tap behind. Oh, so as you tap that foot behind you, you're going to feel the glutes really kicking in. You tap the knee in front. Glutes there. And then up and back and behind. Yeah, lovely there, good. Keep your waist lifted though, Mad. So keep that, that's it there. I want to see that little ray of light passing underneath your waist. All the knee time. comes in front. Yeah, and then behind. Then, oh, wow, God. It's a good one. Oh, I'll be taking this. Good, waist up off the floor. Keep that waist up. So the, yeah. this is a double workout. It's tummy and glutes. And when, as you tap that foot behind you, you're basically getting those glutes to shorten and contract. And it's a really nice one for anybody with pelvic girdle pain or, well, well, pain around the pelvis, not necessarily pregnancy pelvic girdle pain, but it just closes those muscles around the, the, the joints in the pelvis. It's a really good glute strengthener. Good, so two more. This is amazing, this one, wow. Yeah, it's a good one. And, then and such good a good technique that keeping the waist lifted, wow. Yeah, it just changes everything. It means that we're getting the, the whole body to kick in. If you relax to the floor and move your leg around, it's, you don't have the control through the middle. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna then lift your, the top leg, so the feet are up off the floor, bring the lower leg to meet it, so your knees are on the floor and the feet are in the air, that's it. Open the top knee up like a clam, and then we're gonna kick the leg out, and then find the foot again. Kick and foot, can you feel that? So this is all hip stabilizer. This now. is so painful. That's what I like to hear. Okay. Well, I can just feel it, it is, in my glute. Yeah, so it should be, if you're finding it's more quad, what you want to do is roll forwards a bit, so you're closing your hip down towards the floor. So if you're imagining those headlights, they're now pushing, pointing down into the floor. Good, kick the leg out, lovely. Bend the knee, find the feet again. Keep that knee up high, Keep. don't drop the knee back down. So do five. Okay, so keep it there. Yeah, just do five kicking out. One, good, and back. Do two, good, keep that knee a bit higher. So really working through those glutes. Sorry, I'm being mean, three. <laughs> oh, I love it. Four, good. Waist up off the floor. Five, that's it. Last one, good. Knee back down and then relax and have a little breather. Oh man. Yeah, so that is really good because it gets the core, but having to hold your leg in that position whilst you bend and straighten the knee, basically gets all of the little stabilizing muscles around the hip working. So it's all like, it's a good global kind of glute workout. Okay, so now we're gonna do something that kind of relates to running a little bit. Um, in your sideline position still, waist lifted up off the floor as always in your start position. You're now going to tuck your knees, um, your feet, sorry, behind you a bit more. So you're in more of a straight line down the body. Lift the top leg up and we're going to sweep the knee forwards and then back. So you can see that's quite like a running. Oh, up yeah. Forwards. Oh, yeah. This is level one. If you want to do level two, you straighten the leg. Leg forwards, flex the foot. Oh, go forwards and back. Oh gosh. Okay. okay. Let's okay. see what I can do. Nice and still and stable as you sweep the leg forwards and back. You imagine you're just drawing a line along the skirting board and then rubbing it out with your heel. Breathing in, breathing out. And that breath is keeping that tummy nice and active. So as you come forward, that's it, draw the leg forwards. Keep it level with the skirting board. Good. Flex your foot, come all the way back. Engage your tummy as you take the leg back so that you feel a bit of a stretch through the hip, hip flexors. Yeah. And the glutes are having to kick in to take that leg behind you. Keep moving yeah. through the waist as well. That's it. Hello, oh. Dougie. Hi, Winnie. Hi, Winnie. <laughs> Good. Forward. Casually walking around. Hey. Good. I'm slightly conscious of the time, so I'm going to flip us over. And okay. So we will. Um, Good. And then relaxing back down. Okay. So... Um, from that, let's just do one oblique exercise before we switch. So straighten both legs out to the front corner of your mat. Have your hands on the floor so you've got that stability here, because this is obviously your on, lying on a very narrow part of the body. Waist is still lifted. You're going to lift the top leg up to hip height, and then you're going to breathe out and lift the lower leg to meet you, the top leg. First Ooh. leg comes back down, and then the other, okay? Ooh. Hip height. Get the other leg to meet the first leg down and the other. So you're not allowing your waist to collapse into the floor as you lift it. Oh, that. So it's a little, the waist technique. Yeah. So it's obliques, it's core, it's glutes, stabilizing inner thigh. It's a good, again, full body, lower body workout. Up. Love this. 
back and down. And then you can do both legs at the same time. So you can lift them both up and back down. Breathing out. And back and up. And the key is not letting your waist collapsing down into the floor as you lift up. So keep that yeah. lifted. You might need to use your hand to have that stability. But again, just thinking about having a nice light hand on the floor so the upper body is staying nice and relaxed. Good. My mum's up now. Can I have them? <laughs> Good. Okay, so let's come up into the other side. So you're going to use your hands, bring your knees up towards you. We'll do a quick stretch of the oblique. So down onto your elbow, the way that your knees are pointed. So your, le uh, your left elbow is going to come down towards the floor, reaching up and over. That's it. And then, oh, yes. Nice stretch. Then hold on to the other knee, reach your arm up, and side bend over. Oh. Good. One more, all the way over. And then the last one, up to the ceiling, side bend, making sure you're not rotating. Good, grab your head cushion, and we'll just quickly blast the other side. So swing yes. your legs round. Are you, Oki, are you seeing a lot of people affected, like physically from lockdown, from like sort of less, uh, people moving less? Yeah, I think people are getting a lot of back pain and a lot of knee pain, actually. Knee pain, yeah. probably more so. Um, but yeah, I think people are really deconditioned. Even if people are doing loads of exercise classes, you know, you're not moving around as much. And yeah. it just has such a huge impact. Yeah, we're doing a lot of sitting around. So in yeah. front line, shoulders and pelvis stacked, lifting up through the waist again. So you've got your little ray of light passing underneath you and then tap the knee in front and then behind. Thinking about making a little rainbow with that knee, so the knee has a nice smooth arc as it comes up and then back. And you should really feel it as you squeeze the glutes to so tap that toe on the floor behind you. And just check that that hip, the right hip, or the hip that's on top is not rolling back as you tap the foot behind you. So you're really isolating the movement to your glutes. But yeah, I think we're all surprisingly deconditioned. Lift that waist up, Mads, again. That's it. Good. Tap behind. Two more. There is no escaping you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And then you're going to lift both feet up off the floor, keeping that waist up, and then open the top knee up. Keep the knee nice and high, and we're kicking out for 10. Find the feet. Nine. Eight. If you need your hand on the floor, have it there, but just make sure it's nice and light so you Imagine a little meringue under your hand that you don't want to squish. I have no idea how many we've done. Three, two, keep that knee high. It shouldn't be moving, just the low leg. One, last one. Good, knee back down, close the knee, and back together. Lovely. Woo. The, um, take the feet back behind you, opening up the angle of the hips. So you've got that nice straight line down the body, lifting up through the waist, hand on the floor, Float the top leg up to hip height, and we're going to draw the leg forwards and then back for our side kick. So do a couple with the knee bent so you can really feel the stretch of the hip flexor and tummy as you take your leg behind you. And if you've got the stability and you're not moving around through the centre, then you can straighten the leg. Good. And you have toes pointed good. Flex the foot. That's it. Take the leg back behind you, all the way back, lifting through the waist, keeping the leg at hip height all the way. Good, point the toes to come forwards again. So imagine you're drawing a line with your toes. Lovely. Breathing in, flex the foot and then go back. So good, and then engage your tummy as you pass midline. Engage, 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 engage. Lovely, keeping that waist up off the floor. Lovely, forwards. So again, core stability, glutes, loads of stabilizing muscles. That's a goodie. That I'm one. loving this because I feel so wobbly. It's just so good to do something a bit different. Yeah. I'm going to add this into my workout. Yeah, this, this is my weekly routine. routine. It's a really good functional kind of uh, one for running. So it's obviously non-weight bearing. But yeah. it also, I've got a question here. What happens when I realise one side's weaker than the other? Doesn't matter at all. Often we are weaker or stronger on one side than the other. So what you could do is you could do, let's say your left side's weaker. You could start your workout on the left, do the right, and then come back to the left um, so that you do it twice. So it works, works double as hard. Um, you could even kind of just target just the left side just so that it catches up um, oh. or, or do more reps on that side. But it's about slowing it down and making sure that, you know, if your right side's stronger, 
um, and you're doing something with weights and your left side isn't able to, to deal with that, do it without the weights and get the technique and get the, the, um, the what's the word, the form so that you're mm. working the right muscles. Because what happens is when you're weak, you compensate and that's what yeah. we haven't want. Okay, last couple of exercises. So we're gonna do the um, obliques. Yeah, so we're gonna do the lift and lower. So again, just straighten the feet to the front corner of the mat. Check that everything's balanced on top of each other. Waist is lifted up off the floor. Lift the first leg up to hip height. Draw the second leg up to meet it. The lower leg comes down and then back to rest. Breathing in, breathing out as you lift the lower leg. Breathing in and back down. And again, that hand should be nice and light on the floor. It's easier said than done. It's not particularly nice on the hip that you're leaning on, especially if you're a bit bony, or if you have like a, a Greek knee tendinopathy or a bursitis or something, that can't, it's never that nice. Good, and then we're gonna do uh, both legs. So you're gonna breathe out, lift the first, both legs up, and then come back down. Same again, breathing out and then back down. And the reason why we're doing these core and these oblique exercises is the obliques are what translates your power and your movement from the upper body to the lower body and vice versa. And you need that when you're running and to have that rotation through your thoracic spine as you move your limbs, your arms, and to, you want nice movement. Everything needs to be working hard. Good, so just check that waist is lifting up off the floor as you lift your, yeah. lift your legs up. The, and if it means that you can't go as high, that's fine. Just work within the range that you've got. Yeah. Lovely. Last bit. Let's do our mermaid stretch. So you're going to push with your hands up into sitting. Have both of your knees. Uh, mine will be pointing to my left hand. My knees will be pointing to your right. And you're going to come down onto your elbow the way the knees are pointing. Lift the other arm up over your head. Opening up through the ribs. Take your breath in. And out. Good, same again, holding onto the other knee, reach up to the ceiling, side bend. I like this stretch a lot. This is like one of my favorites, it's so good. Mm. Great for people who just have babies who do lots of breastfeeding, just opens up the chest, opens up the ribs. It's actually a good hip opener as well because of the position that you're sat in. If you can't get both hip bones level on the floor, you might need um, a cushion underneath the side on the floor and it will just level you out. Um, side bending over and you can also do it with your legs outstretched if, that's if it's uncomfortable to be in that position so you can still work through the range. Good, okay, let's do a little, come back onto both knees, come onto into a little ball. Again, just come right up onto the balls of your feet so you stretch your plantar fascia. And then you're going to press the heels down to the floor as you take the hips up to the ceiling. Again, just bend and stretch one leg and then the other. And then breathe out, draw the tummy up towards the spine. Sucking one vertebrae back on top of the other. Knees soft, pelvis into neutral, shoulders back and down. Bring your hands together, take a big breath in. And then out. Good, one more. And out. There we go. We actually oh. started fast this time, which is good. <laughs> Darling, I love that. Thank you. My glutes, <laughs> they feel like they've had a good old working. Yeah, I mean, the, the standing exercise stuff is actually really hard. And, and I think two weeks ago when I tried it, it, I could do it a lot better than I could do it today. But it really just shows that, you know, there's stuff to work on all the time. And even if you think you're super fit, like it's about control, it's about balance, it's about you know, your, your body's awareness of where it is. And if you can do it slowly, then you're gonna be able to do it fast. And the other thing is, is when you're running, you're going to um, fatigue. And when you fatigue, that's when all the bad postures kick in. Amazing, so thank just, you so much. I just saw a question about um, posture. So yeah. should we go into the questions now? Absolutely, yeah. So guys, if you, um, thank you so much. Loads of you sent some questions through and I sent them on to Oki. If we, 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 are you okay to go maybe a little bit over time? Is that okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm here. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll chat for a little bit longer um, and I will post this uh, video up on our main page so you can come back to it if you need to leave. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm going to hand it over to you. Some people have left questions in the comments and then you've got ones that I sent you over this morning. Yeah. So, um, 
uh, there was one that I'm glad Lauren's had uh, a good stretch and work. Yeah, out. oh, we well, love well Lauren. Done, 23K. That's, that's a, a superstar. Yeah, well done. Um, so um, posture. So a few people asked about posture. One was when walking. Um, so I always like to think about the balloon coming from the crown of the head. So um, at the beginning of every class, we always start with posture because it is really important. And if you are just aware of your posture throughout the day, you're going to be working all of your little endurance muscles that don't need lots of like power, hard work, but they need to work over a long period of time. And the more that you come back to a good posture, the easier it's going to be for your body. So you're going to work in the good range. So your body's not always going to be at end of range. So if really think about like slumping, kind of being like that all these muscles are being stretched and, and being held at, you know, at the end of bad rage. So if you think about just coming back up again, coming into that good posture, it just gets the muscles to work and, and be used to being in that position. And that will feel like the norm to them. So I always talk about the balloon coming from the crown of the head. And if you do that, you just think about the balloon from here, pulling you up, it immediately lifts everything. So it opens up the front of the hips, opens up the shoulders, and then just tucking the chin down, and you don't have to walk around like this all day long, but it's just about being aware about it. So, you know, we'll often find that I know that I can come by natural. I don't obviously stand like this, but if I'm really <laughs> flat, it's like I have quite a bad posture. But if I stand up and just think about growing, it just, you know, does that. So when you're walking, just think about being active and upright and opening up through the hips and the shoulders. And also the other thing is just thinking about being a little bit active through the midline. So, if you have, uh, imagine magnets through the hip bones that are just gonna give that little bit of support and a bit of glute activation, it just puts that pelvis in a nice position to help repel you. And you'll find when you're running, if you do that as well, and just think about activating muscles, you think like tummy, like it just gives you that little bit more oomph to give you, you know, the good posture, especially as you're fatiguing. And then sat in a chair, well, here's my chair. Um, can you see, yeah, good. So, I mean, most people probably know this, but you want nice 90 degree angles. Um, you want your laptop to be here so that your elbows and your shoulders, you're not hunching up. You're not kind of leaning forwards all the time or scrunching those shoulders forwards. Um, if you're at work, which most of us aren't in the office at the moment, but you should be able to get an ergonomic review. And I, I would really recommend it because it can make all the difference if you've got bad neck or shoulder, or, you know, um, it, you know, you can do all the exercise in the world, but if you're constantly sat in a poor posture, it's not going to have a great effect. Yeah. Um, you can also get book Swiss balls to sit on. They're really nice because they keep active all the time. And then you can also get those like kneeling chairs, which I think are quite good. Um, oh, I've never, I've the, never seen a kneeling chair. Yeah, it kind of looks like a massage chair, but it just puts you in an active kind of. Position. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the other thing I would say is just get up every, you know, 15, 20 minutes or half an hour, depending on how bad your back is or you know whatever just keep active and moving the longer you stay in certain mm -hmm. positions things get static you get stiff you know just get up have a stretch get the muscles kicking in again go and have a glass of water go and have a chat to your mate you know love that um yeah um what else have we got has anyone else done any other someone said do you have any advice to help me stop clicking my upper back that was from nicola clicking um, her upper back uh, is it like uh, a like a you like to click it or that it um, <laughs> yeah maybe we need a little bit more detail yeah. nicola so, i mean clicking in joints is basically just air being uh, uh, released from the joint capsule so it's not the worst thing in the world um it might just be that you're very stiff if you're getting lots of clicks it can be that you, you know everything's quite tight and you just need to have a good old stretch and get the foam roller out do some extensions over the back of a foam roller open that up a bit um and again just work some strength through the back line of the body um, I hope that helps. Um, da, 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 small, great child, da, da, da. Lovely. Okay. And then we've got knees. So someone said, my knees hurt when I bend them. So I've kind of taken this uh, when you're loaded rather than off loaded, because that's when most people's knees hurt and often through running and things like that. So knees, knees um, need really good glute strength. And you also need really good quad strength and, and good range and balance and all those different things. So all of the single leg activities are great, but you need to start from the baseline. So, um, you can't really see my oh, oh dear, hold on. <laughs> Whoopsie. Hello. So, nearly lost you all. Okay, so um, some good quad strengthening stuff. Um, just really basic. So from the most 
simple thing to do is a static contraction. So you literally just press the knee down into the floor. You'll see your kneecap rise, the quads will activate and then relax back down. That should be the same on both sides. You can then get a foam roller or something, a pillow, and then lifting the ankle up. So these are the most basic lower level knee exercises. But if you can't do these, that's going to have a huge impact on how your knee works. And if you have pain, your muscles become inhibited. Um, so I would start with something like this and check your good side to your bad side. And you might find that it just doesn't activate as quickly or you can't quite get that full extension. And once you get those, then you can start building up into your, your um, squats and stuff like that. And then, you know, like a wall squat is a really nice way yeah. of getting the quads to do some work without um, putting too much pressure. Check on the, the knees. Check the knees are behind, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, behind the toes. And also do things like, don't squat so deep, don't put so much load through them. You yeah. can take things back a step or two and work within your pain-free range. And that is how you build up the strength again, keep active, um, and hopefully keep doing what you want to do. Maybe go to a yeah. low impact exercise. Right? Yeah, regress, regress yourself. Yeah, yeah, but, but keep active. So it's active rest, you know. So if you're finding that running's uncomfortable, try swimming, try, try cycling. Um, you know, go back to the key as well. You know, you can't just run all the time. You need to make sure that you're cross training. So you're doing your core strength and your glute strength and your, you know, your, you know, look at your ankle strength, you know, like it's, it's a whole body um, affair, you know, you need yeah. to have everything nice and strong. Whole body affair. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Okay, so we've got hamstring question here. So uh, how to release uh, very tight hamstrings. So um, at the beginning of your workout, you should be doing dynamic stretches, which I think I mentioned before. Uh, so you want to be doing, working, it, but almost doing like a, a, a smaller, gentler version of what you're about to do in the exercise you're doing. So you kind of move into the range, out of the range, into the range, out of the range, and you're getting the muscles to warm up, get the circulation coming in, and it just fires up everything ready for the exercise you're doing. Um, and uh, so, you know, the warrior pose is a really good one for that or your sumo squat with the elbows on your knees and stretching out or walking the dog um, or that silly walk where you kind of put one foot in front of the other. I'm not going What's to... What's that? Bear... Silly walk? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my... Um... <laughs> You're going to make me do it, aren't you? You've got to show us now. <laughs> oh, that. Anyone that's... A... And, and Adidas Run Club, we do something a bit yeah, like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, brilliant. Love that. But silly it's, walking. It's a good one. <laughs> and that is kind of, you know, uh, mimics running. So, you know, think about what exercise you're doing and kind of break it down and do that. But a really good static one. So if you lie on your back, um, so obviously you can do foam roller stuff, but I won't show you that, I'm sure you all know how to do that. So bring your, the leg you want to stretch right into your chest. So you hug it as tight as you can. And then the other leg's outstretched here. And then press the leg away from you without letting the chest, the thigh, come away from the chest. And it is really hard. Like you get, I mean, if you, you have to pull really hard, and that's a really good hamstring stretch. And then it's awkward because I don't have somebody else here, but you can do like a contract and relax, which is a really good way of um, getting the muscles to lengthen a bit more. So you basically hold your position there, get the biggest stretch you can. Then with the other hand, you can bend your knee and resist it. One, two, three five, six, seven, eight, and then relax, and then try and stretch it a little bit further. And you should see, and do it again, bend the knee, so pressing and resisting, so it's a static flexion. So you're, yeah. not, you're resisting that movement, relax, yeah. and then try and go uh, a little bit further. A little bit more. You can actually feel the muscle move, like. Yeah, I've, what is that technique called? I remember it. PNF. PNF, that's it, a little bit of PNF. <sighs> We, we have um, a regular attendee of our classes, Nigel, and he says he's struggling with his Achilles at the moment. Any so, tips? Again, um, with Achilles, so Achilles tendinopathy, I'm assuming that, that this is what he means. Um, it's basically an overuse injury, or, uh, and um, it normally comes from either increasing your work, your training load quickly, um, and not having enough, um, just basically your, your tendons don't, deal with the load so well and they become irritated and, and inflamed and um, you can get acute or um, kind of it leads into chronic um, and, and subacute and 
basically what you want to do is if it's acute, you just rest it and you give it a bit of time to settle. Um, again, doing your active rest or working on, um, you know, core strength, all those other things, keeping moving. Stretching isn't so great for it um, anymore. Uh, we just uh, say about basically keeping that like, in the mornings, making sure that you're keeping your ankles moving nicely. Um, get the circulation going before you put your foot down on the floor so that um, you've just woken up the tendons, basically. Um, and, and you want to look at, how, so once you get to the point where it's not painful as you put your heel down for, in the first step in the morning that's when you think okay it's easing a bit i can start to increase my load and it's about just working very gently through um building things up again um, if it's in the more chronic phases then you need to be doing things like eccentric loading um uh which is basically allowing the heel to drop off uh, a step and then stepping off so that you don't shorten the muscle again um but yeah it, it is a program that you need to go through but it, it, it you need to be very aware of your load that you're basically okay. going through but it's about keeping moving and again you could potentially do some cycling and do something that doesn't put less impact yeah and it's not putting your ankle in that fully stretched position okay um that's perfect and, and work out why you've got it as well so was it just that you ran up a hill or is it that your left hip is weaker and you're really having to push on your that side to 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 uh, compensate for the weakness. Yeah. So it, you know you do need to look all the way up the chain to work out why you end up getting these problems. Um, but yeah, it is about a bit of um, you know offloading that tendon and then um, but then keeping strong and moving. You can also look at some soft tissue stuff. You know, working in to see if there's any tight areas. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of they they and um, the other thing that's really good actually is. Um, like a static contraction. So with tendons, they like being loaded, but not um, uh, not moving. And that can be a really nice right. way of like getting, being pain free. So you could go into um, like a little heel raise and just holding it basically, like dropping right. the heel down and hold. I hope that helps. <laughs> God, I love that, thank you. Should we do um, one, one more thing and then wrap yeah. up, is that cool? Yeah, so um, there's someone else asked about chronic pain. Um, I mean, there was another one about sciatic pain, but I think like with chronic back pain, um, the key with your back is that it's there to be moved and you need to break it all the way back down again. So um, when you have pain, your body um, protects it so you don't tend to move so well, uh, which causes stiffness. Oh, there's Scampi. Oh, Scampi! My Winnie, my dog, loves Scampi. Oh my God, he's yeah. so cute. Hello! Hello. <laughs> he's so sweet <laughs> Look at oh my God, I love so, yeah so i mean this is i mean for anyone with acute pain or chronic pain i think the, the the most important thing is um you know understanding what it is so i think that can help um uh set your mind at ease because i think fear is one of the biggest problems with with any injury but when it comes to yeah. back for some reason everybody is terrified about it they're like oh my god it's back pain it's gonna be awful so uh, but my favourite thing for back pain right from the very beginning is, you can find this on my, on my Instagram page. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, guys, I'm going to so, put all the links. Go to, must go and look at Oki's page. Yeah, so four-point kneeling. And then you can start with just some lower lumbar spine pelvic tilts. Really simple. It's surprisingly hard if you've got lower back pain. You might find that the movement's very jerky. And, you're like, shh, shh, shh. and if you do that enough, you should start to feel that the movement becomes smooth. And that's when those muscles are doing what you want them to do. And then you can add the breathing in. So you can breathe in, tummy drops down, breathe out. And this is basically firing up that whole core. And you can add in the pelvic floor. So you breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. And this is getting all of the muscles of your core to work. So it's your pelvic floor, your diaphragm, your transverse abdominis and all the multifidus down the back of the spine. And it's getting every single muscle to start kicking in and working again, because the reason why you have joints in your spine is to move. So it's not there to be a rigid structure. It's there to like allow movement, bending side to side. And if it doesn't do that, it doesn't feel so great. So those muscles Perfect. become tight and stiff and sore. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would always talk to a professional if you do have back pain, um, you know, if you've got any nerve pain, um, any kind of numbness um, in the saddle area, you know, any sudden incontinence or bilateral pain, you know, make sure you speak to a professional because you want to rule out anything sinister. But at the same time, um, you know, and also it will help you understand what it is that you've got and they can help you move forward. Okay. 
Let's do a two last question, sorry, because okay. I think you'd be really good at this. Jenny has chronic shoulder pain and tightness. She can't okay. turn her head. Oh. Uh, do you have any good neck or shoulder exercises to stretch it out? Yeah, um, so, I mean, neck stuff, um, chronic shoulder and neck. So, I mean, neck is literally just keeping the shoulders nice and still, taking the head to one side. You can use the hand to overpressure if you want. And then you can dip the chin down, which takes the stretch around the back, and then look up mm. towards the sky, and you get the stretch down the front of the neck. I would also look a lot, um, so I would do stuff in prone, so, which is what actually I think we did a lot in the last uh, class. Yeah. But Jenny, you might want to look at our last uh, workout video, which so is on our IGTV. Things, like this, lifting the head up. I think that would be really good for her. We've got lots of exercises yeah, so in that. It's basically open, it's getting the strength. So with the neck stuff, it might be that your lower traps aren't working so well. It might be that your thoracic spine's really tight. You know, upper traps might be working too hard or too long because of your position. There's so many different things. It's really hard to say without seeing you. But there's yeah. a, uh, like the more you can do to strengthen the back line of the body and also the deep neck flexors. So yeah, look at the last session we did because that was actually quite short. Yeah, I think that'd be perfect for her. Cool. Okay. You are a fountain of knowledge. You are amazing. You're Thank right. you. I think it's just, you know, because I, I just want to make sure we get this up because it yeah. cuts out in a couple of minutes. Um, we're going to be posting this for everyone. So let's, we're going to have to get you back, aren't we? We're going to yeah. have to get you back. Love you so 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 much look everyone's saying thank you you are a fountain of knowledge you are an inspiration oh. she's a mother of two follow her <laughs> hamilton physiotherapy and she's got part of an app tinto app i'm going to put all the details down yeah follow tinto as well tinto's the best tinto yeah i love you all right thank you so much love you man. thank See you, you darling take care everyone we're back bye -bye. tomorrow bye bye, -bye.